so how are you? Are you you're back in town now? I'm back in town. Um, I am. I'm so excited. I, I'm such a fan. I think you're like the funniest person. Oh, <laughs> oh geez, you are too kind. You are too kind. Thank you yeah, so much. I love I love all your jokes. And I think it's just because I am from here as well. So mm -hmm. I, I get it. You are here for just the holidays. Yeah, I'm here for the holidays. I'm at my sister's house in Slinger. Oh, so yeah. Slinger. Just up the road a ways. It's up the road and a little bit of a blizzard we've got going on. So we're like <laughs> stuck in the house. Yeah, it's cold out there. It's cold. Isn't it cold by you? Yeah. It's cold, yeah. cold in Milwaukee. It's um, uh, not too bad, though. It's only negative one on yeah, the uh, so. deal. But I haven't checked with the wind chill. Boy, is it windy. Holy smokes. <laughs> you know, and I, I literally find out today, today, that in, in my place, the sliding glass door has this crack in it. It goes like that. And I literally see it today, you know? Of all the days, because there's literally just cold air coming right in. That's why my rubber plant is so pissed off. <laughs> you know, I finally figured it out. It's like this thing just started dying one day. I was like, what the hell is going on? Is it me? And of uh, course, this is the only thing I have in my life to keep alive. <laughs> so I'm talking to it. You know, I'm doing the thing where I'm rubbing down the leaves with a paper towel. Because mm -hmm. I saw a TikTok that told me to do that or a YouTube a or something. Plant? No. It's What's a that? It's an alive plant, correct? Oh, or yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, rubber plant, like, that's the species, I, I think. It. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. I, did, I really went off on a tangent. This podcast okay. is about you, not about my plants. But No, let's talk about your plants. I'm happy to talk about plants. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what is what is your story? Let's talk about you. Um, you grew up in a uh, small town, Wisconsin, and you end up going out to Los Angeles to become an actor. And now you're a small business owner. Where, where did this whole thing begin? What city in Wisconsin? OK, so I'm from a little town called Brandon, Wisconsin. Oh, Wait. yeah. Brandon. Beautiful this Heard time of, of year. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's yeah. right up. It's right up over there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like 800 people. Show so. us on the map. Show us on the hand map. Mm, I don't know that my hand maps very well. Yeah. Oh, you don't? Okay. Here, here. <laughs> okay. That works. That works. <laughs> yeah. That's all anybody needs to do. You know, it's just yeah, you find <laughs> Door County, find Door County, find Green Bay, <laughs> and then just go from there. You know, you did a great job. Okay. Thanks. Um. Yeah, and I I did the the drive when I was nineteen, graduated wow. high school, and um. Okay, hang on, we gotta pause. I'm already pausing the life stories. What okay. did you drive out to LA? And do? <laughs> I had a friend pick me up, a friend that lived in Florida. Okay, then, I'm I am now officially more confused than not. You had a friend that that's a very Wisconsin thing to do. But, you know, be, if you're like in Wisconsin and you're going to California and someone's in Florida. Oh, yeah, I'll pick you up. You're on the yeah, way. Pick you yeah. Up. yeah, no, there's a whole other story. I, I ended up. You know, I'm from such a small town that I was like, how how do people go be actors? Like, I had no idea. I have not a clue. I'm very naive i just had like a dream to do to, that was my life as i always wanted to act i've always been like acting out movies when i was little and um and then i i saw that they they were casting in milwaukee yeah. for the first remember back in the day when well reality tv is still popular but like the real world on mtv so oh, like yeah was, big thing back then um yeah. <laughs> and they were doing the first casting for the first reality movie so oh, i didn't know they had reality movies they don't and thank god they don't this was going to be the first one and it didn't oh. do thank god but that yeah. is what essentially brought me to california because i uh, i did i did like the whole audition process for it i ended up getting it I, w I went to Milwaukee to the bar that they were casting in. And I remember it was like this time of year. So I remember pulling up and I saw like a line outside the door of people, like tons of girls and guys in their like swimsuits. 
And I was like, shit, I didn't wear my fucking swimsuit. Like, I'm never going to get this. I was all bundled up. <laughs> and I went in um, for the interview and I ended up, long story short, getting this whole thing, the, getting the movie. How did you get the audition with all those people? Uh... Well, I think they liked that. I, I interest them because I walked in bundled up and they gave me a stack of papers to fill out, like name three traits of your mother, three traits of your father. Cause they try to find like, you know, and I, I said, I'm so sorry. I don't have time to fill this out. Like, I, yeah. Is there any way like I can just write my name and here I am and call me if you're interested. And yeah. they were just like, what? <laughs> and so on my way back, I got a call and they're like, can you come back for an on-camera interview? So I did an on-camera interview. Then I did a final interview out in LA and um, they're just looking for small town naive people that they can take advantage of, basically. So, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> I, but, you know what, I did um, when I was in college, um, my senior year, I was a production assistant on this show, College Life, which is where you give a camera to a bunch of um, college students and they just film their lives. And that's exactly what that is. It was straight up manipulation of these freshmen in college yeah. such an awful show yeah. um i mean you know i'm sure uh there was good things about it if anyone listening was working on the show right <laughs> i mean i'm sure there was something redeeming about it i just can't remember anything redeeming at this point in time but anyway <laughs> back to your story so this is what brought me because we had a premiere in la and this is the person he was one of my friends that I met in the cast who later said, Laura, I like after I came back and was, you know, the talk of the town, um, came back and I, he said, I'm driving out to California. I know you want to act. Do you want me to pick you up? Mm -hmm. So I said, yes. And he said, I'll be there in two days. So they, <laughs> he picked I'm me just up. down the road. I'm just down <laughs> the main drain. <laughs> <laughs> So he picked me up and mm. my mom packed me a cooler and I had a garbage bag of clothes and a hundred dollars and I drove to California with him. It didn't do much. And that's actually a good thing, I think, because then I started going, to, I went to California and I had like the story. I started um, waitressing. I was living in, on people's couches and waitressing and, and then I met my manager she was like this beautiful Russian lady and I was waiting on her table and she said, are you an actor? And I was like, mm-hmm. And she said, do you have headshots or representation? And I was like, what is that? <laughs> I had no idea. And she's like, okay, come and read for me. Um, and, and I didn't have a car. So I like walked to her office building and then read for her and her partner is actually from wisconsin so oh, I, wow. yeah so i clicked right away i was like oh god yes someone from like home because it was like going to a whole other world out there yeah um and then i read for her and she sent me on my first audition the next day and i booked the first audition i ever went on wow wow that that is such a a unique um I mean, that's a, that's the L.A. story they would put in the movie, you know, right. but that, that's yeah. not typical. Usually it's what what you, what what was it about? Uh, what were you doing when you were waiting that table that, that you know, <laughs> know, did you ever ask? I think I think it was just like um, she probably f smelt fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So, Got yeah, it. I was like fresh off the boat. She's like, mm, OK, here's this like little naive thing like, uh -huh. snatch, snatch her up okay okay so you uh what was the um uh the first booked audition or the first book thing that was <clears throat> that was a film called inside out it was an independent movie at the time eric lasalle was the lead and he was like it was big he was a bigger from this show called Wings. And, but that was what got me my SAG card because that was, it's so crucial to have your SAG card, which I didn't know this either. I'm like, oh, and then because I got that, then I was able to be part of like real, like union movies and mm -hmm. TV started. 
after I did that, I started working at night as a cocktail waitress. And then in the day, I would audition all day long. Um, and I'd never had a car. So I was paying, I was like, had the taxi people and they were like wonderful because they I would call and they're like hello Laura like they knew me <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and then they would wait for me outside the audition and give me their prayer cards like we pray for you you get a good oh it was like they literally like it was me and my taxi crew and um and then I booked a pilot and I started working then like I booked a pilot for ABC um and then I lived in Vancouver for a while shooting that. And then that just kind of like, I started just going from one thing to the next thing. Yeah. Wow. And so at this point, are you, um, are you, what, what year is this now? I don't know. Like oh. on 2005, no idea. 2005, something like that. I just like getting sort of your backstory. <laughs> We're getting up to your, your entrepreneurship. I just like sort of. I, I like the origin story. You know what I mean? Like I'm uh, so bad with dates. I'm like, what is the year right now? Okay, so it was, must have been 2000s. 2000s. Okay, yeah, because it's before Uber. Probably because uh, before Uber. Yeah, Uber would have made that a lot easier, probably. So much easier. But when, you wouldn't have had the experience with the taxis. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, and then, um, from an acting perspective. Um, where, where do you kind of, where do you see yourself going at this point in your life and where, where do you want to go and, and all that? And then when do, do you bring in the, um, the entrepreneurship, uh, into the mix? Oh, um, well, when I was, I was working and basically whatever I was getting, I was just happy to get roles. I, I yeah. didn't really have like a plan or strategy. There was things that I like said no to, um, and I just did what I got. And uh, cause it's not easy to get work. It's, oh uh, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, no. So whatever I got, I'm like, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next, five horror movies, great, love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then I worked a lot and then did the whole, um, you know, got me, you know, had children, I have two kids. And that is what kind of catapulted me into this whole other realm of, I kind of took a, a break from acting to focus on being a mom. Mm -hmm. And then um, I ended up getting like autoimmune stuff. Oh. And that is what, but that's what made me go into this whole wellness world. And I mm -hmm. basically um, became an herbalist and now I'm an entrepreneur because I'm, I'm, I have made, and created the first functional popsicle. So basically you're getting vitamins and nutrients from a treat. Oh, nice. That's great. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like those, well, I, I won't say it's kind of like, but in the same vein, there are those uh, boozy drinks with like vitamin C in them. So you're after it for perhaps the alcohol, but you're also getting the vitamins same but different you're after the popsicle for a treat and you're getting different vitamins that's very cool exactly yeah yeah so um that is that is just happening now we just got into we just made our first delivery to all of the air one stores in la so that oh wow oh geez we're in we're on all the shelves there right now the air one stores oh my yeah. those are the bougiest <laughs> A they are. bougie grocery stores. That's like, um, man, you walk into those grocery stores and you better be wearing Versace, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah, you just, it's like, it's all the cool people are there. Yeah, but it's Versace sweatpants with holes in them. And each hole is $2,000. Um, but that's awesome. That That's great. Congratulations on getting in there. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. I well, I launched nationwide shipping um, on the summer first day of summer this year. Mm -hmm. And then after two hours of launching, they emailed and said, we are interested in your product. And then I sent them samples. And so, yeah, it was it's kind of crazy how it just happened pretty quickly. That's amazing. So so you um, you get an autoimmune um, uh uh, whatever they call it whatever they call it so you get yeah. that and um 
before this happened, were you into like health at all or were, were you just kind of like doing, ah, I do yoga once in a while, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was always kind of healthy, um, but not where I was. I didn't, I mean, I wasn't like taking supplements and vitamins and understood any of that. I was, they wanted to be, they're like, here's a pill for the rest of your life. And I was like, that just felt, that just feels like weird. I don't, I want to understand what's happening, like at the root of, of why thing my body is like reacting like this. Mm. So, um, I was healthy, but I've not like, I know now. Yeah. What, what does an herbalist mean? So I'm ignorant, um, it's like, it's this old way of, you know, back in the day when people would have apothecaries and they would, it's like dried plants for drinking. Like you can drink teas, like a nettle tea, but it's more, you can make tinctures and things. And it's like, it's getting vitamins and minerals from wild plants. Mm -hmm. um, As opposed to getting it from GNC. Exactly. You know, some people like, like, uh, some people are like, oh my gosh, these hippies or whatever, when it comes to like, you know, getting stuff just from plants, getting vitamins for just from plants. But if you pull back and look at what GNC is, it's like, I mean, you're basically extracting it. And there's also a bunch of other crap in that stuff. Like if you ever read the back of one of those big GNC jugs, you know, it's like, over. max protein you know <laughs> like it's, it's that, all chemicals. <laughs> yeah it, well yeah, there i mean something in there is rat poison i don't know what it is but i guarantee you something in there is rat poison something, something. yeah yeah well anyway um so that so you kind of get back to the roots you do a lot of um uh, studying and, and research into all that and um and then why why a popsicle well, because I thought um, it came to me because my son got like a bad flu or something. And instead of taking him to the doctor and giving them, giving him an antibiotic, I was like, wait, I'm going to use my knowledge that I'm learning in school and make him these like tonics, like these use the plants and use him kind of as a, uh, a guinea pig, basically. And so I would bribe him and say, all right, if you drink this whole tea of nettle with lemon balm and whatever I would put in there, I'll give you a popsicle or a lollipop. And then I thought, you know, the one thing that most humans don't say no to is a popsicle or a lollipop, but there was no popsicles that I liked there that had the ingredients that I liked. So I decided to make and create my own popsicle that had plants infused into it that looked like a lollipop. Oh, that's cool. So all of the popsicles look like um, a Do you lollipop. have one there? Do you have one no, with you? I wish I had one. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It's I okay. One, I don't. I don't. I, I oh, mean, and I, just, I literally just came here because all of my production is here in Wisconsin. So yeah, just, let's talk about that. So you're starting this small business and it, it's headquartered here in Wisconsin. Why did you decide to do that? Because there's just like the best people ever here. That's true. And this family is amazing. And they're going to make my, they're going to give the love that I want to put in my popsicles. And they're just, they're in Green Bay and they're the best people ever. Well, who's the family? Buds. It, they have actually a, a CBD brand called Buds Family. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. They're in like the festival foods and they have a CBD line. Nice. Bud, yeah. Buds Family CBD. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. so they they're your um that's so cool to to sort of bring that business uh uh back to Wisconsin. And um how'd you meet them? So when I first started making the popsicles, I was making them from my kitchen and then I got this small commercial kitchen in California that I was sharing with this woman and um it became too much. Like I, I it was hard to people were asking for them from all around. So I tried to figure out, okay, how can I, how can I make these and get them to people, not just in California, but around where people, I mean, I had people from, you know, um, Santa Fe asking, emailing, how can we get them? So actually one of my friends, the girls who makes my elderberry syrup, 
I called her and said, is there any, and she's in Wisconsin. Her name's Kasha. She's the best. She's become like my secondhand person. Um, I said, can you make, is there any way you can make my popsicles in your kitchen? And so we started in her small kitchen um, shipping out and now we're ready to scale. So she introduced me to this family. Very, very cool. That's awesome. Um, And so is this um, product just something that would be in the Erdogan's of the world? Because that's like sort of your top tier um, financial thing. Or is it is it able to get into like festival and all the places, quick trip even, you know, can you get into those spots too? Or is that always a dicey situation? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the, the goal is to get into as many retailers that, that will, that understand the product. Quick trip is not probably the clientele that will want my popsicle um, or be seeking my popsicle. It is going to be more like, you know, plant X in Chicago or like, yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Um, well, hopefully that's changing, but Uh right now, um, people are waking up to health. So I do think that eventually it could be everywhere, but it's just right now. Um, I don't know. Hopefully that changes. I think people are awakening to health. Yeah. I mean, if you go into Quick Trip, honestly, some I, I, I think that's interesting. They've got like some healthier uh, food options there than like your Sitco. And, uh, you know, full disclosure, they're a sponsor of mine. So I'm not, but I this is not something I'm trying to sneak in as like a sponsor thing. But they've got like, you know, they got like the protein bars or whatever, and they're like, it's like the all natural uh, protein yeah. or whatever. So they got some hippie stuff in there, if you know. If you got connections to Quick Trip, then get me in Quick Trip. I'd love to have my popsicles in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I'll t- I'll talk to the fellas over there. No, but I just I just think um, I think a lot of people maybe more interested in, in this kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know. Does a naturalist mean you don't? What uh, is this? I, first of all, excuse my interest or my ignorance here, but does uh, that mean that you just never get medical treatment or you always no, you do, do it? No, you do. I mean, I believe in both. You guys yeah, have, yeah, yeah. have both. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, and, of course. And being health and conscious is just it's for like a lifestyle. And then, of course, when when medical needs to happen you it intervenes yeah 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 okay cool i I mean i and i think um more people are kind of is starting to turn over the labels and see like what's going on in here you know especially as the stories uh as research um comes out over time you know and more time passes and people see how bad some of the chemicals they put in the stuff it's it becomes more and more conclusive of how bad certain things are or could be or whatever. People are like, well, why take the risk? You know, I mean, it's also kind of the same way with, um, I think, plastic and that sort of stuff happening over time. Even my buddies um, who don't think about this often, uh, we were sitting around the kitchen and he pulled out one of these like plastic things or whatever with like a lot of plastic for just like a little small amount of uh, applesauce or whatever for like the, the suck it down. He's like, all this plastic, it's just going to go in the ocean. You know, I saw a documentary. <laughs> and this is not a guy who thinks about that stuff. So he's like, I'm not getting them anymore. I think yeah. people's minds are kind of uh, yes. even, you know, in uh, the Midwest where people don't think those kinds of thought processes happen. I th- I do think that they're starting to happen more, you know? So yeah, I, I, anyway, I think it's a very cool product and it's super cool that you're, you're doing it in the Midwest. Where, where what's your end goal with um, the company? Um, just trying to get it as into as many homes as possible. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I forget what year did you begin it? This year. Well, it, it launched this year in in the summer. Wow. So, but I've, been, it, I've been working on it. It's brand new. I'm like a little, little sprout. <laughs> trying yeah. To figure out. No, it's brand new. I'm. But you already got it in the Erdogan? Yeah. How did that happen so quick? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Literally, I think because it's a really cool 
thing like it's it's it had a little buzz because I was doing some events at my friend's store and word got around and somehow must have got to the Air One people. And then because if you like if you if you Google my website or you look on the Instagram, it, it's it's a vibe. It's like a um, it it be created a little bit of a buzz. Yeah, so I, I just heard about it and then reached out and they were like, we want it. And do you anticipate always keeping your production in Wisconsin? Um, I would like to have them for like the East Coast and then eventually maybe someone in the West Coast. Got it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, congratulations on all that. Thank you. <laughs> and where can can people just buy it uh, over the Internet or do they have to go get it at the store? Well, I'll be open in the new year online again. So everyone can order and then we can ship to their house. And then otherwise, if you live in California, you can go to Air One and get them. Okay. You can ship too, but it doesn't, it's expensive to ship it. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. Because it's a coal. Yeah, I get it. I get it. What about um, acting? Are you kind of, do you have any plans on on pushing that more? Do you like the entrepreneurship more? I like both. Honestly, I I think I feel um, they both push me in different ways. And I do have a movie coming out in February. I did a film. It's my first film in seven years. Wow. Wow. What is that (laughs) Um, about? This one is called A Rose for Her Grave. And it is going to be a true crime thriller movie on Lifetime. Nice. And it's going to come out on... um, like in February, February 18th, I think, or 19th. Okay. And cool. uh, you know what's cool is the 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 girl who plays my best friend in the movie, her name is Chriselle Strauss, I think you pronounce her last name. And she is on Selling Sunset. You know that Selling Sunset show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Chriselle, her name's Chriselle. I think she was just nominated for People's Choice Award or something, but she's going to have a screening at a house she's selling of our film for an episode of that show. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) So it's going to be cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And and, um, so uh, you're at this point going forward, you're you're kind of have the uh, dual path then. You're going to be entrepreneur and actor. That's sort of the deal, huh? Yeah, that's the deal. That's awesome. Well, I yeah. think it's super cool. Like yeah. We- <laughs> yeah. I went to Fleet Farm yesterday. I'm like, Woo! what'd, you, what'd yeah. you get at the Fleet Farm? Oh, I was getting some of my large jars, but I oh, was like, yeah. hey, got a whole little line there. Yeah, yeah. I got shirts and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Great Christmas presents. I know. Great last minute Christmas presents. I'm going to get some of the Ope stuff. That That is good. <laughs> okay. I'm glad. Yeah. You find <laughs> yours. Yeah. I was going to ask you when, okay. So what, when you move from uh, Wisconsin uh, to Los Angeles and you have like, it, was it culture shock at first? What was it like being from the Midwest? It was, I honestly, to be very honest, I mm-hmm. went. I had a real, for the first time in my life, anxiety attack. <laughs> I went really? To the, I swear to God. I went to the hospital because I thought I was going to die. I was like, I'm dying. <laughs> you know that <laughs> when you have an anxiety attack and you don't know what's happening? Yeah. It's the emergency room. They hooked me up to all the things. They're like, you're not, you're fine. You're having an anxiety attack. And I was like, what? A what? Like this, this exists? Like I had no idea. And then I, it hit me like, I don't have insurance. I don't have like money. I don't. So oh, I, yeah. she told me I was okay. I'm like, I like looked around, took everything off and like ran. <laughs> Is that good? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. You, you. You dined and ditched the hospital. <laughs> yes. What is, what is that? You uh, you I don't know. Don't come get me with a bill now, but uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my god! Yeah, you're not dying. You're just from Wisconsin. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I get okay, it. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so did, yeah what what was it do you think that like was kind of freaking you out a little bit um it was just like everyone is so nice here and i think it was the first time i've realized that people are i i was living at the time with 
a bunch of the reality people. And I was sleeping on the floor of a, an apartment where there was like six girls staying. And it was like just things they would do that I I didn't know people could do. Like they were like, like I don't know, like openly bulimic and things and just oh. like, oh, it was just weird and like mean and like would steal my stuff. And I don't know. It was just kind of not a good energy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Who, right. Like, this exists. Like it was like, I don't know. It was like a horrible feeling. I kind know. Of. But then you find your way. Then you find your people. And like, it takes a while to like, it was a super shock. You have to drive everywhere. I didn't have a car. It was just. Yeah. I can't believe that you walk so many places out. That is not a walking. That's super Midwest of you, but that is not a walking city, <laughs> you know? No, it's yeah. not. I didn't realize that. Like, I guess I should figure out how to get a car. <sighs> <laughs> and, and what 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 would you say that because you went from Ripon College, right? You went to Ripon College. No, I never went there. It's somehow you never that, went there. No. That was that was on your Wikipedia or something like no, that. No, I, I don't think. know. That that's not true. I don't what, know. Where'd you go? Did you go to college? I never went to college. So you went. You got the the audition for the deal, and, and so you went right from Brandon to L.A. Top three differences between Brandon, Wisconsin, and Los Angeles, California. Oh, Go. Jesus. <laughs> oh, um, well, that that the weather, the um, weather, uh, the people, and I don't know. I hate, when I'm put on the spot now, I blank. When out. you put on the spot, <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, you know what? What <laughs> months did you move out there again? Um, I think I moved out there in the fall. Or summer, spring, sometime. Okay, okay. Like Twenty years ago. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know. I bring it up because I, I moved out to Los Angeles in January, and I was like immediately depressed because it was sunny and so warm out. I got depressed. Yes, that's another thing. Like when it rains, we're like, oh my god, thank God it's yeah. like cloudy day because you're allowed to then stay in your house and not do anything and not I have know. guilt and anxiety because you're not working out every single day I, like, I <laughs> or being outside isn't that that like i think that is built because i had that same thing i think that's built in the midwest because anytime growing up if it was a nice day outside get outside it's a beautiful <laughs> day yeah <laughs> you know i know and i do that to my kids now too i'm like get outside <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're giving them beautiful day anxiety, you know. Totally. But I think we're all better for it, especially in the Midwest, because you have to take advantage of the beautiful days when they are there. But then when you're in LA, you're like, oh my God, what am I doing inside right now? It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day out there. Every day. And it takes months to figure that out, though. It takes months to figure out every day is a beautiful yeah. day. Yes, it's depressing. And then and then you don't know how much time has passed because they don't have the seasons you know so yeah, exactly. that so threw me for a loop you're just in a big blur you're in a big blur yeah it's, yeah. it's pretty Wait, wild you moved out there like when did you move out there i moved out there in 2010 i uh, drove out 2010 i drove out with my uncle in a blizzard actually um wow. yeah it's pretty nuts it was pretty and nuts. My uncle Denny. We went out in a Dodge Grand Caravan SXT, mm -hmm. which stands for Sexy XT. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We, we had a great trip. And then you uh, you don't live there anymore. No, I moved away. I I lived there for I lived there on and off. I lived there once for a year and a half, and then I lived there again for like four years. But then this took off. And I was like, great. I don't have to pretend to like this place anymore. I'm out. So yeah. not that it's bad, not that it's bad, but it wasn't good for me, I suppose, because unlike you, when you would audition for a movie, you got the movie. Mm -hmm. I just auditioned for movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I have auditioned more than I've gotten stuff. So oh, I know. I, know. I get it. It's not easy. You put the work in into that auditioning and all of that, 
And I honestly probably did not put enough work into that. No, so. you did. It's you're, but look what you're doing. Look what you're doing now. It's like, wait, you got it. You got, you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, well, we're both doing it. And what I like though, um, is about you and your journey is that, you know, you've, you've, you kind of like, you're doing the acting thing and, and then, you, you know, you, you have your family and more things happen to you, you know, with the autoimmune um, thing that you have. And you just, you sort of take your cards and, you know, you play your hand and your hand is just a super cool product that I think you can get into the quick trip at some point, you know, because um, yeah. it's super helpful for a, a lot of people. It's this is not a uh, it's like uh, you can, you know, uh, satisfy whatever uh, sweet tooth you got and get some good yeah. stuff in you and you're making it in Wisconsin. That's super cool. That's right. Yes, I have a flavor for every bud taste bud. So yeah, what, can you rattle off some of the flavors? I have a, a like a healthy version of a lemon creamsicle. Um, I have like a caramelly one. I have a berry one. Um, you just got to try them all, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Can I suggest a flavor? Yeah. Okay. Brandy Old Fashioned. Oof. We could totally make a Brandy Old Fashioned Popsicle. Nice. I'm going to tell, tell you this right now. This is how you do it. You sneak in the healthy stuff. Don't even claim the health stuff. Just say brandy old fashioned popsicle. Quick trip's gonna scoop that up. Oh my gosh. Let's do I, it. Yeah. That that'd be that'd be great. Okay, can I make another suggestion? Always. Brat flavored popsicle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to think about how I would actually make that taste good. Good? I don't I mean, think that's good. the point. I don't think that's the point. Okay, <laughs> because when you get the when you get the uh, jelly beans, right? Yeah. There's always the one jelly bean that tastes like absolute crap. It's the butter yeah. jelly bean, right? Pop yeah, popcorn. There's... Popcorn. That's yes. it. Yes. Ugh. Yuck. Right? Yeah. But some so people one. <laughs> yeah but it but it's like it's almost like the billboard for it it's like oh they make brat popsicles are they good well i mean no but you know <laughs> a real brat is so much better <laughs> yeah the, uh, the the other ones are it's like a billboard don't listen to me i will drive your company right into the ground but uh <laughs> i think that's super fun and uh congratulations on that um and by the way, when you're in LA, this is my last question. Are there any things you, that you miss about the Midwest? <gasps> so many. First of all, thunderstorms. I oh, yeah. will do anything for a thunderstorm. I'll come home every summer just to sit on the lake and watch a thunderstorm. And my goal is a lake house here. Like I, that is, I got to make that happen. You're going to make that happen. I can tell yeah. in the way you said that. Yeah, yep. it, yeah. There is something about a a thunderstorm that's they're the best. The best. Just going to sleep with the boom and the yeah. Yes. Have, have you ever seen thunder snow? No. Where it where it lightnings and thunders during a snowstorm? I'll do anything for that. First time I saw that, I was walking on Lake Mendota in Madison, and it was like a humid. Uh, a humid winter night or whatever, kind of, but this humidity just came in and then boom, it just like there was thunder and I was like, what the hell? And then lightning and the whole thing. I And then I Googled it be, like years, years later because I was like, did I just, was I just on something then? Or, you know, was I just <laughs> yeah. like, what did I remember that correctly? Oh. And it's a thing. It's thunderstorm or thunder snow. It's super rare. Um, what else from the Midwest uh, do you oh. miss in California? Friday night fish fry. <clears throat> oh, yeah. What's your favorite place to get a fish fry in Wisconsin? Um, there's a small bar called Mel's in Brandon, Wisconsin. Mel's in Brandon. Yeah. 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 It's walking distance from my parents' house. It's like a block away. So we just walk there. Friday night fish fry. Get a happy hour. Happy time. Happy time. That's another thing. 
nobody in California gets happy hour. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I love how you call it happy time, too. That's <laughs> happy time. <laughs> happy time. <laughs> cocktails yeah what? at five o'clock like how yeah. come at five o'clock no one's doing happy time <laughs> <laughs> what what is your go-to uh happy hour cocktail mm. well i like wine mm -hmm. yesterday my sister made a bloody mary bar oh yeah it's a pretty good yeah um yeah i'm like a wine person or beer whatever okay not too picky perch or walleye uh both okay oh perch, okay maybe. perch maybe all right perch maybe i to be honest with you i'm gonna be honest with you right now don't tell oh. anyone else but sometimes i'm eating the perch and i'm like mm, this could easily be walleye right now you, you know, don't know. oh no i know because this usually the the size of the fillets if it's ones that we caught i can tell because the size of the fillets Right. I cleaned them, so I know the size of the walleye flies. Walleye is usually bigger than perch, right? Oh yeah, walleye's bigger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We gotta get you fishing more if you if you're. I will fish the shit out of. I love fishing. Oh yeah, what's what's your what's your favorite ice fishing? Yeah, I'll let go ice fishing with my nice. dad and my brother. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you are do you guys clean them too and do the fish fry? All the time. That's all they do all summer long, and then they freeze it. So then in the winter, you have like you pull it from your freezer yeah. or you gift it to your friends. Yeah, the best. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I got a, got some extra fish in the freezer for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grandpa got like a freezer bag, like a vacuum seal thing, just oh, yeah. so just so he could. Smart. He didn't even eat the fish as much himself. He just like giving it away. But that if once you take the air out of the bag, it can last a lot longer. You know? Yeah, it, that's like the best gift ever, too, by the way. Like oh, fresh amazing. Yeah, it's a whole service in and of itself. You know, it really yeah. is like love. Like that's love. <laughs> <laughs> love <laughs> is not expressed vocally. It's expressed <laughs> by a frozen bag of fish. Yes. <laughs> yes, because you, you you have to clean the fish and fish the fish. Like it's a whole thing. And when you and it's not like when you give your fish away, because you don't get a lot, it's mm. it's a gesture. It's a loving gesture. Yeah, think about the hours that went into that. You exactly. know, and the love and the time and the energy because it was in joy. It was like joyful. Yeah, and it's definitely not so the DNR doesn't come to your freezer and see you have 20 bags of perch in there, you know? Hey. <laughs> uh, I kid, I kid. Um, but uh, this has been super fun. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on and uh, good luck with everything. And let me know how that old fashioned uh, popsicle is coming along. Yeah, I'll let you know so we can get into quick, quick trip. Heck yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. I'm, oh, I'm, you bet. I'm honored to meet you. I think you're the best thing ever. We'll we'll have to connect when we actually have our studio. We thought we'd be able to get it done, but nah, didn't happen. But that's how life goes, you know. And enjoy, uh, enjoy Slinger though. And I'm super happy we got to connect before the holiday. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, and watch for deer. Okay. I will. Thank All you. Right. Talk Bye. to you soon. Bye. Bye bye.